afternoon to you and uh, certainly towards the end of her testimony today really laying it bare in terms of this fractured and difficult relationship that she had with the then communications minister Faith Mutambi. Yes, and um, she's speaking there about what she believes uh, Faith Mutambi was trying to do is to frustrate her so much and to create the impression that um, she, Pumla Williams, is failing in her duties as the acting head of um, GCIS. And as we've heard in that testimony that she just gave now as well, that she had been acting in that position for 58 months, which is just over um, four years. I just quickly want to bring in um, ENCA's Erin Bates on this conversation as well. And Erin, before we go into um, her testimony, testimony today just after giving a testimony she spoke to a um, journalist and she had a lot to say quite specifically about um, former president Jacob Zuma yes I asked uh, Pumla Williams if she felt that uh, Zuma had protected Minister Mutambi at the time she said yes she thought so and I said why and she said well she can't exactly answer that but look at what this inquiry is investigating look at what this inquiry is probing uh, probing and I then asked her if she would like Zuma to come come to the inquiry and testify and she said she hopes so. She hopes the former head of state will come and give answers uh, on what exactly happened. But also I think important just to realize what she's described there in terms of her physical trauma, that her body remembered the torture, the abuse that she'd endured in the 1980s, her describing being arrested in 1988, that she had twitches, that she had night uh, scares, that she would wake up and that she struggled to sleep. And just returning quickly to um, the role of uh, the former president and also listening to what Justice Zondo had to say and expressing his astonishment um, to um, this, this revelation that the position of the GCIS um, had has been vacant for over six years and uh, Justice Zondo then asking that surely the president must have known about this and um, she's saying that he must have, considering that the Auditor General has also raised this. Yes, and if we go back to her testimony on Friday, she highlighted there that it was the President who would sign the appointment letter for Directors General. So there's no way that the Head of State could not have known what was going on, could not have known, for example, that when Maseko exited, uh, Manyi entered. So uh, his fingerprints are clearly all over this at this point, and uh, Zondo saying how strange, how strange that this position was vacant for six years. And also considering that evidence um, from Temba Maseko himself that um, there was this conversation between Collins Chabani, the then minister, as well as the president, who had said that I want this person removed from that position. Yes, and that echoed again today by um, Williams when she described uh, Mutambi wanting to have the right people in GCIS to do her bidding, basically. Uh, that they wanted to have the right people on the ground to be making decisions around procurement uh, that would benefit them and their friends. Now, I think what's important here is a lot of people people, our viewers, for example, asking what is all of this testimony relevant to? Why is Williams here and why is she going into so much detail? We must remember in the chronology of events, she's describing the aftermath of Maseko's exit, how things fell apart, this Hollywood style um, drama in the GCIS following Maseko's removal and the arrival of Mani and, uh, and subsequent leaders. So that's where this fits into the broader timeline of events and uh, you just get a sense of the kind of fear uh, that that she felt under Mutambi, who had no reprimand, no sanction then from the head of state. Yeah, yeah. even, even the, um, the Deputy Chief Justice was taken aback there, but in even asking the evidence leader, Kate Hoffmeyer, that to explain why exactly um, there is this line of questioning. But then Kate then went into, if you remember the evidence from the experts on Friday, and what we would, would show um, this commission is that there was an attempt to undermine governance structures within the government and its state functionaries. Yeah. Yes, and it goes further than that. She's given us that context, but she's also given us not only the attempts to undermine state structures and state protocol, which is legislated, things which government officials must do by law. She, Advocate Hofmeyer, as part of the legal team, has shown us step by step, time and again, how government law and protocol was flouted, how people were leapfrogged to senior positions in GCIS. Why does that matter? Because GCIS paid 55 million rand to the new age for breakfasts between 2011 and 2018, never mind that they weren't even happening in 2018. So she's pulling together all of this evidence and showing us how government protocol, government law was broken, procedures were flouted by senior members of politics, by the absolute hierarchy of the government. 
And a lot of people have been implicated in these testimonies that have been uh, given in front of the Commission. And we saw earlier on today some of the lawyers of those who have been implicated coming forth indicating whether they want to apply for cross-examination, to cross-examine uh, cross rather um, some of these witnesses, including um, Feiki Mentor, Tembo Maseko. No one as yet for Pumla Williams? No. So what was interesting was at the end of her uh, leading of evidence, Advocate Hofmeyer raised that the Viva Voce, which is just the oral evidence of Williams, has deviated and gone beyond her written submission to the inquiry. And that following on the back of that, they may need to inform, will need to inform people implicated of uh, their implication now in this uh, inquiry and its proceedings. So the legal team will do that. Interestingly, I thought that the Porco came up so significantly. In fact, his name was the last name in Williams's testimony before Hofmeyer raised that issue of uh, these implicated persons. So he may well be one of those people. Why? Because in her testimony, Williams noted that it was with his direct and active participation that uh, certain decisions around finances were made in GCIS at the time of Mani. And she also indicated that um, the procurement officer was bullied into making some of the decisions, which include um, signing the contract with the TNA breakfast. Thank you so much, Erin. Well, uh, we will continue with the coverage of um, the state capture inquiry. However, though, um, the uh, today's proceedings have been adjourned until Wednesday, possibly. That is when the lawyers will be coming back to indicate whether they'd like to cross-examine witnesses and which witnesses exactly it is they want to, cro to, 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 to cross-examine. And um, the chief justice, the deputy Chief Justice rather will then take a decision on that matter and the process to be followed. And then on Thursday, um, it has been confirmed that an official from Treasury will be coming through. And as Aaron Bates has alluded to, um, to the 55 million rand that was spent by GCIS on these uh, TNA breakfast, and that um, that Treasury official will then explain the chronology of events as it took place in terms of the payments that were made to these Gupta Link companies. All right, Eldrin Sampier, Aaron Bates, thank you very much indeed. Live for ENC. Now in Parktown.